Hi, Neil here again from EA Media. I know that laws and legislation can be kind of on the dry side and you're here to look for information on security architecture, but it's important to understand this simply because it impacts how a security architect will put together solutions moving forward. Just a reminder to click on subscribe for this YouTube channel if you like this video or if you like any of the other videos that we have. Well, I have to say, I'm impressed. This morning, Reuters put out a story titled, Fearing Hackers, U.S. Senators Propose Internet of Things Security Standards. That caught my eye. So I made myself an extra large cup of coffee, found the proposed bill that was being worked on by Congress, and read it through. For those that are having trouble sleeping, the bill is called Internet of Things Cybersecurity Improvement Act 2017. Oh, and just an FYI, this only has to do with devices that companies want to sell to the U.S. government. Now, I've read a few of these things over the years. I've found that, in general, lawmakers really don't have a good grasp of cybersecurity and typically put together something that is way too general without the level of controls that would make it useful, in my opinion. But in the case of this particular bill, I have to say I'm actually impressed. It may actually have some usefulness. In order to save you from having to drink four or five extra large espressos, let me give you a really short recap of what's in the proposed bill. First, anyone providing a device to the government that can be connected to the internet has to provide written certification that it doesn't have a vulnerability in the NIST National Vulnerability Database. By the way, if you're looking for the NVD, you can find it on the EA.media website under the NVD page. Next in the bill is that any device being provided must be able to accept properly authenticated and trusted updates. The device can only use non-deprecating standards. The device cannot use any hard-coded passwords in the software, and developers are going to hate that. The government agency must receive patches in a timely manner. The contractor providing the device must be able to tell the purchasing agency how to put in the patches. There's a waiver method if it's not practical to find a device that meets the bill's standard. If a device can't meet this bill's standard, there must be a mitigating solution put into place to deal with vulnerabilities that can't be fixed or patched. And finally, if there's a standard that exists that is more stringent than the bill, that standard can be used. Now, there's a lot of good things in this bill. For example, the fact that there's a requirement to show that a device doesn't have any known vulnerabilities forces vendors to actually do vulnerability scans of the product. Also, the fact that it's necessary to show that patching can occur is huge. And I really like how they state that a mitigating control needs to be put into place for a device with a known vulnerability. But like all things in life, there are poor aspects to this bill. For example, when I saw that it specifically called out no hard-coded passwords, I knew that someone with limited exposure to cybersecurity was involved in the crafting of the bill, simply because that's the sort of thing that a person with limited knowledge would grab onto. Also, I hate it when terms that aren't specific and measurable are put into policy, like this one. For example, the ability to put in place patches in a Timely manner is an issue. I mean, who defines timely? What's timely to you may not be timely to me. At the end of the day, this is not a bad bill. It goes into areas that haven't been dealt with before and actually forces b vendors to do security testing on their devices. Although the definition of written certification isn't in the bill, so the vendor could just send a letter saying that there isn't anything to worry about. Too bad it doesn't legislate to the entire industry as a whole, and not just to companies wanting to sell to the U.S. government. 
I would recommend that any vendor that is working on the Internet of Things take a look at this bill and consider how to meet its requirements. It's something that you'll see from other world governments as well in the not too distant future. Well, that's it for this video. If you like this video, check out some of these other videos, including these two that I've just highlighted. I'm Neil Rarep with EA Media, and I hope this helps.